Hello everyone, this is Alex Ipatov and this is the video number 8 from the series on Rook Endgames. In this video I'm going to talk about the cut of king versus double pawns. We're going to examine double pawns on files B or G and D or E files. In the first example we see that white has double pawns on B file and black is defending passively, keeping the rook on the 8th rank. From our other videos, we know that the passive defense would have saved the day for black in case if white had only one B pawn. Let's say white would not have had the B4 pawn. Then it would be a draw, because white wouldn't have been able to make a progress. However, with double pawns, the evaluation changes. The defensive method does not save the day for black anymore. So in this position, white wins by playing rook g6 with the idea rook c6, b7 and rook c8, exchanging rooks, giving up one pawn and promoting the other one into the queen. That's why it's important to have two pawns in order to be able to give one away. So rook g6 first. The direct b7 would not be possible because of rook h6 check. Then it would be a fielder position, king a5 and black keeps the rook on the sixth rank and it's a draw. Likewise, rook c7 would be also a draw with the idea rook c6, because then black would have had a tempi to play rook h1 with the idea rook a1 check. And the rook on c7 is misplaced because it cannot check on the 8th rank. That's why rook g6 is a correct move, because now black is unable to play rook h1 because of rook g8 mate. Black rook cannot leave the 8th rank. Also, there is no check on the 6th rank. so. Black has to wait passively on the back rank. And now white has to be precise after rook c8. In order not to fall in the trap that black just put. If white prematurely plays b7, then black has move rook c6 check. And after rook takes c6, this is a stalemate. So the direct b7 does not work. White has to give black a tempi to play. So white just waits with move rook h6, for example. And the black rook has to give the c file because the black rook is bestly placed on c8. Once again, the rook cannot go to c1 because then white is able to check on the 8th rank. So rook g8 waiting passively, but now it's a different story because white does have b7 in this position with the idea rook c6, rook c8, as we already know. And there is no stalemate in this position because if rook g6 check, white can take rook g6 and the black king still has the c7 square available. So b7, rook f8, waiting passively, then rook c6, waiting passively, and then rook c8 check, transposing into the pawn endgame and winning the game. So what we learned from this example is that with just one pawn, the passive defense saved the day for black against b and g pawns, but with double pawns, it's lost. So with double pawns, the passive defense does not work. Now let's take a look at another example. In this position, white has double pawns on the d file, but the difference is that black can implement the other defense, not only the passive defense like in the previous example. So let's see what happens. Rook b7, rook g6. We know this method from the fielder position, the video number one. The defending side keeps the rook on the 6th rank, not letting the white king come to c6 or d6. And whenever white pushes the d6 pawn, then the rook goes to the rear in order to check the king from behind. So if king c6, then simply rook c1 check and the white king does not have d6 square available. So black waits on the 6th rank with the rook, rook b6. And comparing to the normal Philidor position where white has one extra pawn, black cannot accept the rook trade here because white has an extra pawn. This position would have been lost for black. For example this, king d8, king c6, king c8. And now white has an extra tempi d5. King 7 king 7 white wins. So after rook b6, black cannot exchange, so black has to give up the 6th rank, but it's still not lost. The only move not to lose is rook g4. So this is a very important move that is worth remembering, keeping the rook tied to the d4 pawn. 
So what happens if white plays king c6 here? If white plays king c6 with the idea rook b8 check and d6, then black takes on d4, rook b8 check, king e7, and we transpose into the method number two from the Philidor position, or the one that we started in the first video of the series. We see that white is unable to play d5, d6 check because it's covered by the rook from d4. And whenever white checks, the king goes back to d8. If king d6, then simply this. And so on. If rook h7, then king c8. Rook h8 check, king b7, king e6, and once again king c7. An important move. And once again, white does not have move d5, d6 check. Because it's covered twice by the black king and by the black rook. So, once again... Rook b7, rook g6, rook b6, rook g4, a very important move, keeping an eye on the d4 pawn, so white cannot play king c6, as we just saw, because black takes on d4, and transposes into the second method of fielder position. So, let's see what happens after move d6. And after d6, we transpose into the first method of fielder position. Black starts to check the white king from behind by playing rook g1. So now, after king c6, Black checks on c1, and the white king does not have the d6 square to go, so it goes to d5, and now rook comes back to h1, rook b8 check, king d7, check this, d7, and now we start checking, because now the 6th rank is exposed as well, so the white king cannot hide there. King c6 check, king c5 check, d5, and now once again we see the method of the fielder position in action. We keep the rook on the 6th rank. Now we wait the other pawn to reach the d6 square. And then we go in the rear and we start checking the white king from behind. So king c6, rook c1, king d5, rook d1, check, king e6, rook e1, check, etc. And the white king cannot escape from checks. So in this video we saw that the defensive method does not save against the double pawns, however, the fielder methods 1 and 2 do save the day. It's very important to remember that if the better side offers the rook trade, the defending side cannot accept this because the pawn endgame is lost, because white has an extra tempi. And the only move to make a draw is to keep an eye on the backward pawn, in this case on the deep 4 pawn. So whenever white moves forward with the king, king c6, we take on d4, check and king e7. And white does not have move d6 because it's covered twice by the rook and by the king. And whenever white plays d6, then black transposes into the method number 1 from the filter position and starts checking from behind. So that was the video on the cutoff king versus double pawns. That was Alex Ipatov. Thank you for watching.